All right, this is Danny at DB's Nature. I'm gonna give you a little history on this one. That is a, what I call the flower pot or a bucket swarm trap. Um, I've had some laying around here and a swarm just happened to move into it. There is a hole on the bottom of that swarm trap. That's where they go in and out, and in and out. It's a hole about as big as a squirrel to go in and out of it. And, uh, or let's say as big as a golf ball. Now, what happened was I got this swarm in there last year, 2020, and I did not feel like taking it out. I got too late in the year. Bees don't build wax a lot later in the year. And if I would have cut them out of there and put them into rubber bands inside of a frame and then put them inside of a hive and expected them to build comb, uh, it, it would have been awful late in the year for them to attempt that. So I decided to go ahead and just leave them in that flower pot. Now that flower, I call it the flower pot swarm trap. It was sitting out here on a, something like a Pepsi crate or a two liter bottle crate that had holes all in it. So they could fly out the bottom of it and fly away. And that's actually a star foam beehive lid with a piece of floor tile laying on top of it so it won't blow off. And it sat out here all winter. It got down to negative six, negative 10 and i mean it got cold and i thought well this is going to be a true test to see how these bees do and they survived so a swarm has not moved into it this is just they survived now they might have swarmed since because this is june like 25th 26th somewhere around there so they could have possibly swarmed i want to get them out of there uh and I've cut many, many out of there with a knife and put them in a rubber band and put them in the frame, but I decided not to do it this time. I'm not in too big of a hurry to get them out of there. And it's a messy way to do it that way, especially when they got a lot of honey in there. <clears throat> so what I decided to do is pick up that swarm trap, put it on top of a 10 frame box with drawn out comb with an inner cover with a hole in it. So now the holes are matched up and the bees are having to go down through that box and come out the entrance. And you can see they are working that entrance, but they also are working right through there. A lot of times I come out during the day and they're all around. Now what has happened, I noticed when I put that flower pot on top of there, they have ate the entire bottom out of that flower pot. So that hole now is as big as a flower pot. You could just see comb. And that's the way it was sitting on the Pepsi crate. So at some point during the winter, during the first part of this year, they just ate the entire bottom out of that trap. That's why I don't like those traps. They last about a year, maybe two years, and that's about all you get out of them for 25, 26 bucks. For, uh, I can build, I can dumpster dive and grab some lumber and build a swarm trap for free. Just with a few nails and stuff like that, whatever I have laying around. So, uh, and then they're kind of hard to get them out of there. If I had frames and a five frame box, it'd be easy to get them out, but trying to get them out of these flower pots is a challenge. So my plan is, she's been sitting on here for a good month and a half. My plan is that she has moved down into that deep and she has babies down in that deep and that queen is down inside that deep. That's my hope. That means that flower pot's full of honey, which is fine. That's just, that's just fine with me. My thought is I'm going to take that flower pot off of there right now, set it to the side. I'm going to go into that deep. I'm going to see if I see the queen, and I'm going to see if I see eggs. If I do, there's a pretty good chance she's down in there. If that flower pot weighs 25, 30 pounds, there's a pretty good chance it's all honey. So there's a pretty good chance she's down in that bottom box. I'm going to add another box to give her more room, put a queen excluder on, put that inner cover back on, put the flower pot back on top so they can keep using it as a honey super. And when I come back in a week and I confirm there's still eggs in this bottom below the queen excluder, that flower pot's gonna get taken off and just sit out here. And I'm gonna just let bees rob it out and then it's probably just, I'm gonna cut the wax out of it and I'm gonna burn the flower pot because it's trash. But I'll get the wax out of it to melt the wax down. But what I'm hoping is right now, they're just using that upper entrance there, that flower pot as a super. So we're gonna dig in. This is not going to take long. No. Well, that's not going to work. Let's see if this will work. Let's see if this will work. What's going to work? On the ground?
All right, well, got my camera on the ground. Boop. We're gonna see how this is gonna work. Clock's running, everything looks good. You can see everything. One problem I have though, is I went to go pull this box out and it had wax moss in it. So the day, way the deal with wax moth is a uh, plain foundation. They won't go on there. These other two frames had a couple of wax moth larvae on it and I was able to get them off. Matter of fact, that one didn't have any. This is the one that had wax moth larvae on it. You can tell I scraped some of the comb off of there. Matter of fact, there is a live wax moth right there. We will dispatch that dude, I think. Yep, we'll take care of that. But uh, probably should put this in the freezer. But boy, I examined it pretty hard and got all the pollen off of it. Anything I saw moving, left it laying out in the sun, didn't see any more movement. And I'm about 99% sure that there is no wax moth larvae left in this thing except for that one. So it's hard to find them all. Probably should put this thing in the freezer, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna let them deal with it. And they will, if they just find one or two, they'll take care of them. But uh, the rest of them had quite a few wax moths in them. And I could not get rid of all of them without just destroying the comb. So what I did was I throw them in the freezer. Now, man, they got to be in there three days. There's another larvae I just killed. That's a big one. That's an egg layer. So I might make my decision here in a minute to change my mind and go put this in the freezer. I didn't like that I just found two big monsters. And there's probably other ones laying in here hiding from me, and I just hadn't noticed them yet. Yeah, there goes another little one. All right, well, we'll see. I'll play with this here for a little bit more. Make sure we kill all the ones we see. All right. We're gonna go ahead and give it a go. Hopefully there's enough bees in here to deal with this. So there's a couple of frames of drawn comb. I probably should have pulled one out of that other deep that I just used, but uh, in three days, we'll have that comb in here. So we're gonna take this lid off. Not really anything going on on there. Uh, I'm gonna put my glove back on. Don't mind getting stung in the legs or something like that, but boy, getting stung in the finger. That happens way too much. Just everything else I do. Got little red dots all over my fingers. I can see bees are going in and out up here also. We're gonna pick this up and see how much it weighs. Oh, it's got a little weight to it. It's not 20 to 30 pounds. I'm gonna try to keep the comb vertical and boy, it is dark, dark comb. So now you can see what I'm against. I am not gonna get in there and cut all that out. I am gonna look in between there and see if I see any brood. If I don't, hopefully it's all in the bottom down here. But I'm gonna keep my comb vertical. I don't wanna lay it on its side. It'll fall off. Get that box out of the way. I'm looking in here and this is full of bees. The entrance is, the lid has smashed down on top of the frames. Might have to go get a new lid if I have one. Now that's agitating them a little bit because I'm tearing up their house. Probably should have a smoker for this one. I'm gonna give them a second to calm down because they erupted pretty bad. I sure would like to see if there's brood in this bottom box. I'm gonna give them just a minute to calm down. I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek in here. And I do see cat brood up there. So our goal is here to hope the queen 
down here. I'm gonna take a little peek, make sure there's brood down here. And there is, and there's eggs, and there's larvae. So she's down here also. So if you get one of these flower pot swarm traps that get away from you, you can just stick it on top of a tin framer. Let them go down in there theirself. Look at this thing is a monster. I sure would like to catch a peek of her real fast. And there are some eggs that are like one day old. So she's been down here. We're gonna just, they gentled back down a little bit at the initial damage that I've done to them. So we're gonna keep peeking to see if we see her. Man, I can't believe this swarm has gone crazy big. Every once in a while, I'm gonna look over here. Queens and bees don't really like the sun. You can imagine they're in the dark all the time. So when you pull out a frame and look like this, a lot of times she'll run right around to the other side. So when you look to the other side, you look around the edges. I don't see her. I'm gonna go ahead and give up at this point before I smash any more bees. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. They're hauling in pollen. They got cat brood, cat drones. And we're gonna put the queen excluder on. And we're gonna hope she's down here. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this inner cover back on that has filled up full of bees again. We're gonna give it a quick check to see if we see a queen walking around on it. And I don't, unless she's really a dark one and I just not spotted her. We're gonna bounce this off right at the entrance so those bees can go back in and we're gonna put this back on. And I already see something I don't like. This is pushing that queen excluder right down on the board. So therefore the bees can't go through it. So I'm thinking if I do this, well, I'm not liking that either. That, that inner cover hole is laying right on that frame. So I'm gonna do like that. That way there's some working space there for them. And let's see here, these frames are running this way, the comb is. So I'm gonna go ahead and orientate it with the uh, actual beehive. Put it back on there. Oh, geez, what am I doing? I'm losing my mind. Let me fix this. I forgot about putting my other deep on there. We're gonna put this deep on there like I said I was gonna do in the very beginning, duh. These two frames, three frames, we're gonna go ahead and push right together. Now the danger is with not having all your frames here, they'll start building comb off the lid. Well, I'm gonna give them about three or four days to do that. And then we're gonna come here and start changing things up. We're hoping that queen's down here. We're gonna go ahead and put that on there. Again, our comb is orientated in exactly. I'm gonna take another quick peek. They can get down in there. I know this is probably flared up on the corners a little bit. So I'm brainstorming. I'm gonna change something else again because I don't like the setup. It's kind of nice that I don't have this thing full of frames. I'm gonna scoop these over. That never works. I'm gonna scoop these over up against the wall. Straighten my box back up that I moved. I'm gonna put this queen excluder on here. Now I don't care that the inner cover is bowed downward because I can see straight down through there. So those bees can go down through there now. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back up here and do one more check. Make sure everything is orientated the right way. 
Boy, there's a lot of these on the lid out here. Again, I'm gonna see if I spot the queen. I'm gonna give it about 10 seconds. And I don't. So I'm gonna bang them off on the front. So they'll walk right in the door. Put my lid and towel back on for some weight. And let that cook. Look at here, I didn't even notice these entrances here on the side. See these up here fanning. Y'all probably can't see that. I'll drag you up here so you can see it. Those bees are up there fanning, trying to spread out their odor. It's another reason I don't like to use smoke. Bees communicate with odor. So right now I want them to find that queen and deal with her and deal with their hive and fix it. And you're throwing a lot of smoke on them. They, uh, lose their orientation a little bit. They gain their orientation back faster without you changing the odor in the beehive with a bunch of smoke. Like I said, if they get carried away, I just put the lid back on and walk off and leave them. But uh, you know, I bounce those off in the front. They're gonna all work themselves back in. I never did see the queen. We're gonna give it about three or four days, come in, see if there's any comb coming off the lid, see if we see any eggs. If we see eggs down here, we got her. At that point, we will give this, since there is brood up here, we will give this 21 days before we take it off, three weeks. Because from egg to emerge is 21 days for workers, and that's all I care about. I don't care about the drones. Now, if some reason she is up here, this hive down here, if it has eggs, it may start pulling queen cells. If it does, I'll go ahead and break them down and I'll go ahead and cut the comb out of here and try to shake that queen out and put her down here. I still don't feel like shaking today. They're doing such a good job on this beehive. I'm gonna let it be. Let them be for a while. Let them be a bee. And uh, we'll come back in like three weeks, see what we got. This is just a fun little test, but I hate cutting comb out of there, especially when it's full of honey. It's a sticky mess all over my tailgate of my truck is where I usually do it. It's hot. You got to do it early in the morning when it's a little cooler so you can handle the stuff. But if you get one like I did and it got carried away, this is one way to deal with it is let them work their way down into a box. And then eventually you can take that off. Now, for some reason, you don't want to cut comb out of here. You put that queen excluder on there like that, and you come back, and there's no eggs down here, and they're pulling a queen cell. That queen's probably still up here. You can take your queen excluder off, wait three or four or five days, maybe overnight, and come back here and put it back on. Come back in a week and see if you see eggs. If you see eggs, you got her. If you don't, she's back up there again. Take the queen excluder off and just keep trying. Eventually, you'll probably end up cutting this up and shaking her out of there. But I'm hoping she's not in there. I'm hoping she's down inside that box. And boy, it was busy and there was eggs and larvae down in there. Reason I'm babbling on here, I'm kind of looking to see if I see the queen. Sometimes you'll see little groups like this right here and she might be in it. You'll see a little group on the front. She might be there. You might see a ball of bees laying on the ground and she'd be there which would not be a great thing. I'd pick her up and put her back on the landing board. So I'm just trying to go around scoping. But you see people taping up their beehives and stuff like that. I mean, look at the holes that's in this thing. Look at that, there's a big old hole. I can stick my hive tool in there. All I have is a rain cover on it. And dude, I'm gonna tell you, this has been set up like this and we've had some pretty serious rainstorms. And this hive is, look at there. This hive is thriving. They're doing great. So we're going to let them cook. See what happens. Well, today is July the 5th. It's Danny at DB's Nature. Shadows are long. It's about 7.30 in the morning. This is July the 5th, the day after the 4th of July. Well, my neighbors had a really good firework display down here last night. We got to sit and watch. But, uh, we're back to this beehive right here. Let's see if I can turn the camera around. Nope, I can't while it's running. So this beehive here, we were working on it before. And what we done, this is a bucket swarm trap that I cut a swarm in last year. This is 2021, I caught it in 2020. It survived the winter, 
we got very cold. We saw minus six, minus 10 Fahrenheit here in Arkansas. That's pretty rare. And um, uh, this thing was still thriving. So the first thing I did is I got that bottom box. There's a deep down here in this grass. I put a inner cover on top of it with a hole and I set this trap on top of it. Cause during the winter, it just was by itself. And they and I left it on there for a good month, and they have filled that bottom box full of brood and honey. So last week I came in here, it's been at least a week. <clears throat> Ignore that busy bee. That's just a box that I bought. I put this box on. There's still brood up in here. I could see it, but there's a queen excluder under this lid now. It's kind of hoping she was down there. What we're going to do today is look see if there is eggs down here. If there is eggs we know she's down here we're gonna go ahead and cut this open shake all the bees out of it or we might just leave it here and let all the brood hatch because i know there's probably still some brood in there and uh and then we'll take it off and let the bees just rob all the honey out of it and then dispose of the trap because it's shot but uh goal today is see if there's a queen down here if there's not we're gonna cut this thing open this swarm trap we're gonna cut it open and start going through it and finding that queen and we're gonna put her down there so that's what we're doing today see if i can get y'all set up here to where you won't fall over and that might be a chore i might have to pull this i use flooring tile a lot for lid weights and won't blow off they're easy to deal with and a lot of times they're free and i like that free stuff so we will uh, angle you down just a little bit there. Like I said, like I said last time, not the best tripod in the world, but it works. So, key equipment for today. I've got this lid zip tied on here, so I brought some wire cutters and a knife to be able to cut comb if I need to. I uh, wish I had a queen clip in my pocket, but for some crazy reason, I don't. So we are going to light a smoke today. I'm a little off camera here, but and I should have already done this because that's usually what I preach. Light your smoker before you even put the suit on. But I did not do that. So I'm going to show you real quick how I light my smoker. Empty smoker. I use wood chips from Tractor Supply. I put one handful in here. I get my $16 torch head from Walmart. Has an auto igniter. You gotta keep the head out of here a little bit so we can have some oxygen to work. I get that thing going. We were fortunate from the side. Taught a lot of people to do that. And that does work. But boy, if your wood chips are wet at all, it won't work. Now I got a fire going in there and actually got some wood chips on fire down in there i'll throw a handful on it and see it already slowed down a little bit and here it comes back once it starts coming back real well and thinking about catching on fire i'll throw another handful on it there's a big old chip i don't need that and that's probably all the smoke i'm gonna need today so we got a smoke to with a lot of beekeepers won't even go work their beehives because they're constantly fighting with that stupid smoker. So I set it down, and every once in a while, while I'm getting my gloves on, I go by and give it a few more puffs to make sure it's still going. Now I could see if I could drive these bees out of this uh, swarm trap with smoke. The deal is though, there is honey up in there. Um, so I want to see if that queen's down below. If she is, then we're going to make our decision what we're going to do with this swarm trap. The ideal is if she's down below and there's not that much cat brood, so I don't have to deal with this thing again. You know, I can go ahead and start stacking supers on it, see if they can pull, do anything. It's kind of late in the year. But, uh, so, Smokey's still going. Put the lid on old Smokey. It's a little dirty, could be clean. We're just going to take this off, set it on the ground. 
Matter of fact, since it's sitting there flat on the ground, I'm gonna put my rain cover, my telescoping top over here. Boy, they had it sealed down. Y'all can still see, okay. Uh, high pool would be nice. I brought my truck down here. Now, I'm gonna look right here real quick because I can see my queen excluder. Let me see if I can show it to y'all real quick. So here's the bees. And there's a queen excluder. So what I was gonna do, and there's a good old high beetle. What I was gonna do was look real quick, see if I saw a queen walking around here trying to get down into the bottom. And I don't see that. Whoop, come on tripod, stand up for me. I'm gonna have to work on this for a little bit. Oh, oh fell off. All right, we're back at it. Drop my telly old phone. All right. All right, let's get this done. I have all day. All right, here comes the inner cover. Snap, crackle, pop. Looks like queen excluder's coming with it. Oh, and I forgot my frames. I got frames up in the feet, up in the freezer to finish this thing out. Also, last week, Last week, after I uh, after I got done with the video, I actually did come down and fill this thing up with feed, and I like what I'm seeing. They're pulling comb, and it looks like the feeder's empty. There's a lot of bees on this first frame, so I'm going to take a quick look at it, see if I see any eggs, and I do not. A lot of bees in there polishing. They're polishing the cells. <clears throat> See their head stuck in the holes? So they're in there polishing, preparing for a queen to lay. And that side's full of nectar. So they're actually using this as a honey super right now. I'm going to take another quick look. See what I see on the next frame. And I don't see any eggs. So we're going to go down deeper real quick. And see what we see down the bottom. I do see pollen being carried down in the pollen in the bottom. That's a good sign. And I got a box with no handles on the side. I hate that. Ugh. So we're gonna dig right into the middle. Can you still see me? Yep. We're gonna dig right into the middle and see if we see eggs. We see cat brood. I'm gonna blow on them, try to get them out of the way, and they are back filling with nectar. And I see no eggs. So that is telling me, I'm not gonna be real concerned about setting this down on the ground because I have a feeling my queen's not down here. Okay, there is brood. <laughs> And now there is larvae. And I see larvae as young. Oh, I see eggs. So my queen is down here. We'll see if we can spot her real fast. Hopefully she's not on the frame I got on the ground over here. We'll double confirm, yep, there's eggs right there. So my queen's down here walking around and this is a swarm that I caught. We'll take another little peek, see if we see her real quick. She's laying a really nice brood powder, and there she is right there. She is right there walking around. See if I can get her up there a little bit closer and show her off. She's right there walking around before I get her to fly off. So, my plan worked. So last time I explained that once we put her down here, All brood out of that swarm trap will be hatched out in uh, 21 days. So if there is an egg laid up there, it'll be hatched out in 21 days. My concern is, is they started pulling queen cells up there because now we kind of separated this hive with a queen excluder. That won't do it. What will do it is, is there's an upper entrance. 
So when I put that queen excluder on here, and there's another mm -hmm. entrance besides the one on the front of the beehive, I've now created two beehives. They could start pulling queen cells and hatch another queen up here. I don't want that to happen. I don't want any troubles. So I've got frames up there in the freezer that had wax moths in them. Oh, and one of these, one of these frames here, one of these frames that was in this box had a little bit of wax moth damage and I think it was this one and they seem to fix it quite well I'm just gonna take another little peek at this other stuff here yeah they're filling it all full of nectar so I don't see any reason to waste any more feed on them if I was just putting foundation up here I'd give them feed but uh, she's laying really well I don't see any reason to waste any syrup on these. So there's only three frames up here with a feeder. Usually I run eight, so I'm five frames short. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up to the freezer, grab my other couple of frames. Look at those smoky, boy, it's going real good. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave the queen excluder on here because we don't want that queen to come back up into this. We don't want that queen to come back up into the swarm trap. And we're gonna take a peek in this swarm trap real quick. We're gonna see which way the comb is, and I've got it totally wrong. Woo, 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 don't fall off now. Let's see if you can see that. Oh yeah, there you are. So, the comb is vertical. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of damage to this thing. See what I see in here. Make sure I don't see any queen cells. And I still have cat brood in here. And there's drones. So I'm gonna let this thing stay here for a total of 21 days. I don't really care about the drones for 24 days. I just really care about the bees. I'm gonna let it stay in here for another week or so, two weeks at the most 21 days. So that's three weeks. And once I'm confirmed everything's hatched out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this shake all the bees down inside this box and this comb will go bye bye and go into the melter that's what we're doing july the 5th 2021 so we gotta go up the freezer put the frames back in here we'll set this back on here and hopefully they'll start abandoning this eventually once all the brood gets out of here and all the brood down in here and i give them all this new comb but right now boy they're holding tight to that thing look at all them bees in there we'll eventually get this turned about two more weeks and we're done so that's it. Y'all have a good week. Okay, so I ran up the house and got the frames. I thought about it while I was gone, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Take that swarm trap off of there. Lay a little smoke to them. I'm gonna grab my hive tool. So I'm gonna do, I've got uh, five frames that I'm gonna add to this thing. So, you know, be careful. Your queen could be on the bottom of this queen excluder. That's why I kind of bang it off. So they're not really brooding up in the top here yet. And I want them to kind of ease up there because uh, she's brooding real heavy down below. These are the five frames that I brought. They just had some wax moth issues. So I'm gonna pick, can you still see me? Yeah, I'm gonna pick this middle one. Here that had brood on it and possibly the queen, I don't really care. And I'm gonna put it into this top box. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna pull the two middle ones. This is the one the queen was on. I don't know if she's still there or not. And I'm gonna put up into this top box. I'm not really trying to do swarm prevention. I'm just trying to get them to spread out a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. That's three. So there's three like that. So I'm gonna go down here and replace these three. And I'm only doing this because this column is, this uh, hive is really strong. 
<laughs> that one's got a lot of drone on it. I don't want that one. Now these just came out of the freezer, but it's hot today. It's gonna be hot and they will warm those up real fast, like in a minute, it'll be over with. So this had wax moth damage. They'll go through there and they'll clean all that wax moth damage up. They tend to pull br uh, drone on the bottom of these frames and it makes them real fat. Therefore you cause damage. Uh, when you put put your fat fat bottoms in there is what I call them. So uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see here. This is all the see the little larvae, the little white things. That was the wax moth larvae trying to get out. They're frozen and dead, and the bees will take care of the rest. So now I kind of checkerboarded three frames in here. There's three frames that's been put up here. I got this one on the backwards. I like to have my feeders right over the top of each other. So now I'm gonna checkerboard these three frames in. So what I'm gonna try to do is put regular comb in between them. Let these bees get to spreading out and working on it. This this is something you can do for swarm control. I'm just doing it because I want these bees to spread out and make up a little bit more room and hopefully get out of that swarm trap. That one's a little fat on the bottom too. We're gonna blade it off with a hive tool. Because it's the last frame going in and I can't have it too fat going in there. It'll tear up other comb. There she goes. I'm gonna have to give it a push because it's a little tight fit. That's a gallon and a half feeder instead of just a gallon feeder. So eight frames are a little tight in there. And I tell you, since I've done all this work, I think I will go ahead and throw some feed in there. See if I can get that queen going all over. That'll be another gallon and a half of feed, and that'll probably be the last bit I feed them. <clears throat> but, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the camera off and go get that. I got it sitting right up here in the field. I'll go ahead and fill that up, put the lid and everything back on, and put that swarm trap back on the top here in the rain cover. Let it sit here for another couple of weeks, and I'll come and dress this hive again. All right, that's it. Hope y'all had a safe 4th July.